。Hello， 大家好。哎、欸，大家都是真的要来听这这个东西吗？的人吗？这还是只是刚好进来，而且好像接触不良，对不对？怎么办？有点怕。像没有。嗨他好像没有跑出来，对不对？好，没关系，我们来除除一下错。有人可以救我吗？<笑>有人可以救我吗？谢谢。好，这是我的电脑，是吗？是我接触不良，可这个很贵耶。哎、欸，可以了。刚刚好了。那所以是接触的问题吗？还是这个？哦，他的只所以他只有。有有有有有，然后，对他都会闪退。就我。<笑>好，我先自我介绍一下，我叫陈翔宇。嗨，大家，然后也可以叫我周颖。然后为什么我叫我要讲说我的本名呢？因为通常大家都讲英文而已，但我就只讲本名，因为我在这里，因为我在这里，就是我是这个特别感谢的单位，所以我都跟人家讲说，我跟 Google Research 有现在有同样的地位了，因为我有一个单独的 icon 这样子。没有，我会参加 Cost Club 社群，其实真的是一场意外，因为我是其实我的本业是心理师，我是智商心理师，但是我会写一些 code。然后那个时候我是在一间科技业工作，当科技业的人资，然后因缘际会认识那个 Cost Club 的众筹涂抹。然后我才因缘机会进入了这个领域里面，但是在过去呃一年半在科技业的工作经验，其实我发现说在呃。我以为我学的心理学的东西跟科技也没有关系，但后来才发现，即便是在工科技业的领域里面，其实很多心理学的职能跟心理学的。概念其实是需要被广泛的推广的。那尤其是在性别这一块哦，就是呃，我不知道大家觉得自己的工作职场环境性别友不友善？友善举手。OK， 三个，其他应该都不友善。Do I have to switch my language if if you need it？ 你会需要吗？还可以。OK， 就是现，因为这个其实是双语的，就现场有人需要用英文吗？我是可以切换一下。OK， 那我们就用中文。哦、oh, ，你说你需要是不是 ？Do you understand me speaking Chinese? No. OK. So, and like, can we? Oh, do you guys also understand if I speaking in English? Okay, so if there's anything that you need translation to Chinese, just let me know. I would do like, <laughs> like, 双声道啊 Okay, so what is the AirPlay code for the code here? Do you know that? This is my pen. This is my pen, or is it my own? Or is it this side? Okay. Okay. All right. So let's talk about my background. So I'm a psychologist, actually, and then I study in the U.S. for two and a half year in counseling psychology,、um, which means that most of my time I'm seeing my client, and they most of my client they come from、um, sexual abuse family background. So I used to work with.、Um, Sexual abuse child and also sexual abuse family a lot, and、um, most of my time there, I didn't think about computer <laughs> or didn't think about coding. I was just focusing on my job. But like 
a more and more client comes in, they come from different backgrounds, and some of them actually come from technology background, which is kind of surprising, you know, like because we suppose, like we assume, people come from tech tech field, they usually have like more friendly attitude, more supportive attitude, but actually um, we still see these things happen, like keep happening in the tech field. Although those are people come from Amazon or Google, even in that field, sexual harassment and sexual assault is kind of everywhere. Right, so we don't make assumption about like, oh, you are you got people can uh, tech feel, so that means you are definitely uh, feel comfortable uh, to your work area. There's always exception, always different cases. We have to be uh, very focusing on the individual instead of just uh, categorize. They are just generalize their experience into the group. I don't know. 我想一下怎么办，那我先把这个传传出来。嗯。because I don't have my PowerPoint, so like I have to do this in a very traditional way. So things first thing is my is gender. Okay, do you guys know what's the gender difference from sex? Do you know these two things are different, right? Okay. Can you guys tell me what's the difference between sex and gender? Any? How about you? Okay. What's the difference between gender and sex? So this is actually your shenli xing bie. And this is your shen hui xing bie. And we used to think that uh, we only have two genders in the world and two sex in this world. But actually, it's totally upside. Like we actually have like more than two um, of the sex around the world because like you know our genes is like X Y or X X right. But actually, a lot of people is X X X or X Y Y. Have you heard about that? Because like everybody's genes has different um, extraction. So anyway, just this is kind of out of topic. So uh, do you think these two things directly connected? Is this two thing like directly So people might have like uh, sex uh, in uh, thing he's a boy and then thing like the gender because the society thinks that he is actually a female. So this is our two different things. Um, and then, so I'm going to talk about info about me because I'm a feminist and I'm a feminist therapist. So we really validate um, how a background shape a person's experience as they're growing up. So my gender is definitely, <laughs> I look like a female and I act like a woman. And, and the, the, the other things that <laughs> separate, influence a lot is um, my uh, study background. So when I was little, I studied in when I was in my middle school, my teacher like because I really like writing, and my teacher just supposed like uh, she think that I'm definitely going to study in the literature instead of an engineer. And then when I apply for my high school that time, I want want to become a scientist. And my teacher just say, "Oh, you know, like Zoe, you are a girl, and then also like you're good at writing. You're great Chinese. So that means that if you go to the literature field, that will be a really perfect fit for you." But that just kind of cut my um, road to be a scientist. And you can see that I definitely, because I my high school is in Wulin Gaozhong. Wulin Gaozhong is kind of the top school in Taoyuan. And like in the Wulin Gaozhong, my math is definitely very, very bad there. But <laughs> out of the Wulin Gaozhong, my math is actually really great. But my teacher just saying like, oh, because you're a girl and also you're good at writing, so that means you go to the literature field, psychology, social science directly without giving a think. Um, and also, like, oh, after I graduated my high school, I decided to study in psychologist because I think that there's kind of a combination of two things because some about some part about is a literature part, but also some part of is like more like a science part. So you can see that my career has kind of shifted by my gender a lot, even though part of me still thinking that being a scientist, uh, interesting in coding and all these kind of rational thing is part of my interest. I still think that um, maybe this is the role I need to go to the older woman's role 
like being a psychologist, being a supporter, being a caregiver, because also like being a counselor also means like you are kind of a caregiver. 目前可以吗？我可以一句英文一句中文，如果你们需要的话。OK， 所以呢，我我会觉得我被认为说，因为我要当个照顾者，然后这个社会认为我们是一个照顾者的角色，这样。所以第一件事情是去想一下 ，the first thing you have to think about here is like how's your career choice influenced by your gender, gender and not sex, alright? And then this we are going to talk about the gender discrimination that we all found out in the work. So the first thing is gender discrimination. That means I discriminate you or I Kind of look down on you because of your gender. Because of your gender, I think you are not available. You are not qualified to do something that we will call gender discrimination. And gender harassment means that anybody、uh, show any like gender relevant、uh, poster sign to make you feel uncomfortable. And then this is like a power dynamic sexual harassment. It's different from sexual harassment. It's because when it goes to different power dynamic, some people is in the higher social.、Uh, si Higher social power class, and some people in lower social power class. That these things shift different. So we have to define it differently. Why? Because if a person says, "Oh,、uh, I can't say no to this person," then in the regular session, regular scenario, we'll think, "Oh, that means that you you don't want to reject this person. That means you have some affection to this person." But what if this person is your boss? This person is your supervisor. So that makes you, the the reason why you can say no is more reasonable, right? Because this person has more social power to con to manipulate you. So it sometimes is really hard to say no to the person、uh, as the supervisor. So we have to di differentiate these two things. And also, like、um, this is social dynamic sexual assault. This situation is more, even more complicated because、uh, somehow, like if we want to work with our supervisor, we somehow we try to twist our mindset to like them more, right? 就是意思说，假设你今天要跟你的老板工作的时候，其实你需要有一点点调整自己的心态，到说我需要有点喜欢他，不然我没有办法跟他工作。And this is the human natural. Everybody needs to be like friendly, and then they have to use their emotional connection to work with people. Although you work remotely, you still have to build some kind of connection to the people you work with. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the most like uh. A confusing part about the sexual discrimination is called microaggression. Have you heard about this word before? Microaggression. Okay. So, like a lot of things, these two things above, like these four things above, they are kind of easy to、uh, define, easier to define.、Uh, like you did this thing, you did, you send this sexual text to your colleague. So this is definitely a sexual harassment, and you. Definitely have like intersection in, intersects with the the other colleague, and she she say no, and then you just do it, or like he say no, and but, but you just do it. These things it's kind of like a reality. It's easy to define, although it's still hard, but it's still um I mean it's not underlined. It's pretty obvious, right? But the the last thing we're going to talk about microaggression is kind of the things that you feel uncomfortable, and it's kind of um. It happens because of this cultural background, because this gender inequality cultural background, and somehow it's hard for you to say, "Hey, hey, that's not、uh, appropriate." And if you say that's appropriate, somehow it's hard for you to give them an answer and give them a reason. The first thing is micro assault. That means that a person he didn't mean to assault, he didn't mean to discriminate you, but like he intentionally did something like. Pretty discrimination. For example,、um, somebody just talk about some racist joke or like gender joke, but say, "Oh, I'm just joking. I didn't mean it, right? Why don't you be so serious? Like, why you are so serious?" And this kind of thing, we kind of categorize them as a micro assault. And the second thing is micro insult means that.、Um, I kind of validate you in some way, but that validation actually is I underline gender、uh, sexism message. For example, I'm say, "Wow, you're a girl and you're engineering, and you're an engineer. That means definitely means you're perfectly smart, right?" This sounds kind of compliment, but actually is insult in the other way.
right? Okay. And the last thing is we call micro invalidations. Means that a person he makes some um, he kind of um, this value uh, under atmos atmos make you or like denying you, um, saying that your experience is not valid validated. For example, a man can say to a woman, say, well, this is a very gender quality, equality society. There's no, there's no such thing called feminism. Feminism is a fake issue. Like he can say this kind of thing. It's just like saying that, oh, we are already living a very qualified, a uh, very equal mm, society. And like we kind of just uh, ignore what other people still feel pain, right? Okay. So the that uh, I also um, talk about some race race issue because somehow it's hard for us to recognize gender issue, and that's it will become easier for you to just like change the males and females um, to white and black. Just easier for us to understand. Um, 意思就是说，有很多议题，我们在讲男生女生的时候会让人困惑。但是只要稍微把这个男生跟女生的 category 换成 black and white， 我们就会觉得，哎，其实比较好理解。OK， OK， I kind of run out of time。OK， so we're going to talk about the gender issue in Taiwanese technology. So， for example， the first thing is like， oh， girls do the less and boys do more。And these kind of things, well, it sounds like beneficial to women, right? Because like we validate, we just think, oh, women can do less job, and then、uh, guys need to carry all the chairs, <laughs> carry all the computers, and girls just like, oh, because they are girl, they they don't have that much muscle, so. Uh, just let girl to take a rest. Some women might think, "Oh, this is actually beneficial to me," but it actually create another double layers of your difficulty in in your work. For example, because they kind of less validate your power, so at the same time they give you less benefit at the same time. So, for of um, for example, a girl might feel like um. Because I was kind of treated well during my work, and I, they kind of take off my job, so they, I can still get the pay but do less job.、Uh, but like when it comes to yearly review, I have to double prove myself. I have to double saying that oh, because I do that, then that, then that. So this means me a valuable person. So you give me the promotion. So it is just so. 如果一个女生她被这样子对待的时候，她可能会觉得，哎，这其实是好事啊。但实际上发生的事情是，因为你平常做了比较少的事情，所以当你真的在被 year review one on one 的时候，其实你需要花更多的时间去证明说你是有在做事的，而且你会有一份 anxiety。You got the anxiety about like you have to prove yourself you are a useful person because some people just like。所以这是一种双重困境，他是先贬低你 ，like he take off your job and then。Somehow you have to prove yourself. Like you, you have this power. You have this ability to do things. Okay, or like some people will say, I, I will just use my gender charm to work. For example, I'm a girl. I'm a female supervisor, and somehow I just have to use my female attractiveness to make my all the her coworker work for me. Okay, and the third thing is like uh. Kind of really hard to say is like when it comes to sexual harassment and you reject someone and maybe you report to someone, but after this report you have to following up with them. And then the thing is like they kind of have different attitude towards you, and it's hard for you to distinguish whether they treat you badly because、um, because of just the job or just because like you didn't accept his harassment. Okay. And any other things come out like because you guys all come from tech field. That's my assumption. Or like, what other things that you think this that kind of gender issue like happen in your work field? 有没有其他什么事情你们觉得也是在你们的呃工作领域里面很常会遇到的？我会不会讲？我是不是讲太快了？对，我是讲太，我觉得我应该讲太快了。OK， 好，那我讲慢一点，因为我很怕。那我们就如果时间超过，我们就慢慢讲。OK， 好。So we're going to talk about if we happen to have this microaggression, um, uh, behavior, then how we gonna react to that? So we're going to talk about micro intervention. This is kind of a new research idea that probably they can have. They have this proposal. 
uh, three years ago, and I was in that conference. Um, so it's talking about how we're going to um, react to this microaggression. The first thing is we have to recognize things. Um, so for example, there's so many terminology, so many names, uh, was invaded uh, when we talk about uh, discrimination, talk about racism, talk about sexism. Why? And um, some people will say, well, that's just some like researchers thing. Like researchers just like, like to invent new stuff and make people feel confused. But actually, that's not true. Uh, the first thing, why terminology is important because it's kind of help us to point out the elephant in the room, right? There's an elephant in the room, but you don't know what a, an elephant's name. You don't know how to say. It. You just say, "Well, there's a big, big thing," but like it's not. You don't know that's an elephant. So somehow we just have to name the elephant. So the terminology is to invade. Yeah, like they are being invaded because we want to recognize the um, toxic behavior. The second thing we have to educate the perpetrator, uh, we instead of focusing on the victim, telling how to group themselves, we have to educate the perpetrator. The third thing is we have to seek out help from the outside. And the first thing we talk about here is kind of the, uh, the my favorite part about micro-intervention is that sometimes we can really like just do it very quickly and then just show your disagreement. And it's kind of powerful. The first thing is like you show your disagreement saying like before, for example, uh, somebody in the chatting, they're saying that, oh, indigenous people, they are not good at studying. And you could just say, well, I don't agree with that. Or like when somebody just makes some gender joke, you could just to say, well, I don't think that's funny. And that's kind of very small behavior, but kind of stop the toxic um, masculinity and toxic environment directly. And second thing is you try to show your, uh, express your value and your bottom line. For example, you could say like, oh, I respect multicultural, but like the word that you just say is not allowed here. Okay, and the third thing you could just like if you don't uh, you don't feel comfortable in mode to it comfortable enough to show your disagreement that you can also just describe what what's happening right now. Well, you could just say, did you just call her a a bitch? Did you just say, did that? You could just describe this thing without adding your comment. Or you could say, uh, you could use I can I don't know how to translate gan, gan You could just use gan to say, wow, I can't believe what you just say. Can you say that again? Do you, are you sure you're saying the, the thing that you're trying to say? And as, uh, also the other one is try to interrupt and then redirect. Was like, well, you just say, um, um, she's a bossy supervisor, but like, I, I think we were just trying to say, she, you are kind of having a hard time work with her, right? You can help them redirect. And the last thing is you use the nonverbal communication. For example, you just shake your hand. You just like cross your arm with like, um, I don't agree with that without saying a word. Those things are very effective. Um, we don't have to uh, do this like big, like big theory to against or like have a revolution, have a rebelling behavior. You just do something small. And then you just cut those things off very quickly, immediately, and that's kind of effective. Okay, and I'm going to talk about black tree effect. It's like um, uh, because we all we all know like somehow we kind of get in, get ourselves into this very difficult situation. It's like not not just the perpetrator hate you, but also like some people around him or around her kind of have negative feeling towards you. And we we call these things black sheet of that. So if you ever got bullied and this kind of thing is relevant to black sheet of that, is like they hate you, it's not because they you're hateful. It's basically because they need a person to hate. The reason why this is happening is like in the group dynamic, in this group dynamic, when the group dynamic feels a need to connect to each other and feels the urge, uh, when they got the pressures, they somehow just like um, project this pressure to other people. And how this group dynamic work is they to, they, to, they want to find a victim, they want to find a black sheep. And then some old people gossip about the black sheep, so like people can feel like, oh, I'm not the target. I just shift the, my hater and just give it to the person. 所以意思就是说有时候你在团体里面被讨厌跟霸凌并不是因为你做错了什么事情而是团体其实就像一个个人一样当他感觉到一个力量的时候他会找到一个对象去讨厌去释放他的压力 okay. But what if you are the victim? What if you are the black sheep? 
So we are going to talk about the trauma. Uh, we're talking about trauma because trauma is not something really far away from us. It's actually really close. It's our daily life. We can like happen to trauma all the time. Um, the first thing we have gonna to admit that, and I'm going to use this <laughs> sentence like, um, 刚刚那个那个黄甫他也有用用那个人选之人, a pe a person selected by human, 的的这句话，嗯的一些台词，那我也用用了这句话，里面是这样子，就是这个雅静啊，这个王雅静这个人。她呢, uh, this character, like she was bullied and kind of by her boss and also her colleague. And then this is kind of her new friend. And then she sounds something to her. It's like, wow, uh, that's kind of impressive. Like you living in that environment for so long. Um, your your arm must be broken. And then she was like, what, what do you mean by my arm is broken? And then... Her friend was like, well, um, humans are kind of animal. They connect to each other. They live together. So if somebody was like, if someone is ex excluding them from the group, they will feel the pain. They will feel the truly pain. Like the pain in your brain is exactly the same as you broken your arm. 所以其实这些心理上的疼痛，它在身体上造成的事情是一样的。Okay,那如果你遇到这样子心灵的伤,你要如何复原呢? The first thing is to 止血, so like stop the bleeding. You have to leave this environment, you have to protect yourself. Lots of my clients, they come to my therapy room and then when they come to some bully situation, use the most of the thing that they say the most is like, oh, I have to try to train myself, I have to, 我需要去锻炼我的心智啊, I just like, if I just can ignore them, that will be so easy. If I just can, um, like, lean in my own and like start thinking about them, that just be more easy. But it's it's not true because like it's hard. Like people just connect to each other. So if the connection was disconnect, was break, was broken, uh, that means you can't protect yourself anyway. So you have to leave this uh leave in this environment. For example. My previous job is pretty toxic. It's a pretty toxic uh, environment. That doesn't mean all the people work there I don't like. It just means some people there is pretty have this very aggressive attitude towards me. And and I, I know it's going to continually hurting me if I don't leave the environment. Okay, so I decide to quit my job. But that's not the only option. We're going to talk about the other option. Okay. The second thing is that you're going to solve your 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 how do you say your scar? Uh how do we solve our scar? It's like we close to people who love us. Because the, the connection, the affection that we build with the people we love like they it does heal our brain it does heal our brain and give us some dopamine um, and chemistry in our brain to help us heal the trauma and the third thing you just have to practice you have to practice how do you practice you don't practice you don't directly jump into another pool the thing you do to pra do with practice is, is you have to talk with a counselor talk with a therapist to kind of organize this experience what happened to you and then after you go through this healing process the next time you're going to be very wise to make your uh, make a road okay any problem uh, any questions so far Okay, it's pretty ah, it's pretty intense though. Okay, yeah. So this is just the whole. Okay, I think what I want to talk about is, I I think leave is a choice. And I think most of the time, I would recommend leave. To be honest, even like in my in my therapy room. But if you don't have a way to leave, what do you do? Find your online network and find your group and find this network 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 and Uh, the hate, hate, then the things that we are going to do is like we have to build our bond like more and more frequent to be like even more stronger to defend those like his uh toxic environment. So, you know, how down, but yes, in the moment, we see, see, why I'm going to do this. 
，在理解这些创伤的这个事情上，大家很容易有个想法是觉得，那是因为我太脆弱，我就是不要理他们就好啊。为什么我要一直觉得，嗯，他们说我怎么样，说我怎么样，我就是心里不够定，我就是不知道怎么样忍耐。And this is kind of part of our culture. We think that we have to bear a lot of things. We have to be tough enough、uh, to stay in a very toxic environment. But actually, just like You have to treat yourself better, and the best way you can treat yourself better is to find an environment that is suitable for you. Okay, okay. So that's my speech for today, and thanks for coming. Yeah, just you have to clap, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 我应该没有讲超过。好，那你们有什么问题吗？目前为止都还好哈、哦。Okay. 就是就是、OK，So、okay. he's asking like because Taiwanese are tend to be slave， <laughs> and so like how are we going to um、uh, what's my what's my goal to promote this culture like more supportive culture right？ 嗯、um, ，So a lot of things that we can do， 呃、uh, ，the first thing that I would recommend is to find your community。That's the first thing like because you could directly get the rewarding fulfilling um。Feeling, uh, just uh, come from the connection. The second thing I definitely recommend you to read some books, right? Uh, 就是一些像是呃、uh, the books that I would recommend you guys a lot, and it's kind of popular right now. It's called 哈马先生去看心理师，看过吗？听过吗？对不对？哈马先生，然后还有一些书，然后还有性别打劫。Okay, 性别打劫 kind of. 呃、uh, ，gender not OK， 这两本书 OK， 我觉得可以先从这两本书开始，然后再来是呃，如果是嗯，在环境这个整个团队里面，应该要怎么去改变这个大问题哦？我觉得它是这样子的，就是嗯，因为。有有一个人说过一句话，他说：“真正的改变并不是一个人前进一百步，而是一百个人一起前进一步。” The real change only happen in like not in happening one person、uh, step forward for one hundred steps. It's like one hundred people step one step together. So, um, 这个时候呢 ，the we have to define our boundary. We have 我们要去设立这个界限，也就是我们要去理解说哪些部分是我的责任，哪些部分是别人的责任。And once you understand, oh, I already took my responsibility, and the the rest of the part we just let go. We just let go. That's how we do it. Um, we we are uh advocate for our, our community. We advocate for gender equality. And if you feel like oh that's the thing I I do, I will feel like oh, 我会觉得说这么做的话，我可以嗯信任我自己，我可以放过我自己。我因为我已经做了这么多的话，那我就觉得这就是一个很重要的点，就是你做到这边，接下来是别人的事情。我们要去区分这个界限在哪边，这样。所以，嗯、呃，很多事情，很多 even 是 gender discrimination， 很多时候也是发生在界限的不明确。也就是说，别人会认为说，我可以去决定你要做什么事情，然后是你可以影响我做的事情。可是，一旦你把这个界限设立出来的时候，你一部分是在伸张自己的正义，一部分也是在。嗯，抵抵御别人的入侵 ，OK。而且台湾为什么是一个 slavery culture 这么严重的地方？很多时候就是因为界限不明确，老板的界限不明确，员工的界限不明确。可是要把界限定义出来，但那个界限的意义是什么？除了这是我的事情，这是你的事情之外，还有一个界限的概念是，我知道我做了这件事情，假设我 advocate for myself， that means also like your emotional boundary is created。That means， um， I can control your emotion。如果我真的拒绝了你的加班的要求，一部分这个是我在建立我的界限，但同时我也要对你的情绪是理解到说那个不是我的事情。OK， 所以对我希望有回答到你的问题。OK， 好好好好 ，OK， 呃、uh, 呃、oh, ，Sorry，She's <笑> he's the speaker，and I just take your time。